it brings up a thought about improv to me, which is that eventually who you really are is going to come out. Yeah. Like when you're in a troupe and every night you're trying things and you're failing and you don't have time to think. I mean, even at the beginning of your book, it says something that I think applies to life as much as it does to improv, which is if you're hesitating, you're planning, you're not improvising. Ultimately, I think your point is, is like you are enough. You don't have to put on a show or develop tons more knowledge or fake anything. Like if you're in a scene, on, in an improv scene on stage, you have plenty of information in your brain and you have plenty of life experience. So just use that and respond how you would respond. If you held a gun to my head, then what would I do? I would go, I'll give you anything. Like that's what Matt Walsh would do. Like I don't want to die. That's right. all you need. Just embody as well as you can this imaginary circumstance and just behave as if you were in it. So there's enough, basically I think it's about like coming to terms with like, oh, I, I know enough or I can handle any situation because I can revert back to how I would behave in that situation. If you're trying to be funny, that's where you get in trouble. If you're really like, oh, I'm gonna come up with a killer line or I'm gonna be the funniest one in this show, like those are the things that will just destroy you on stage. But if you're sort of modest in your approach, like I'm just gonna commit to this reality and I'm gonna listen, um, then you have success. Like it's like the audience will go with you through those moments like, oh, this is a little wonky. I don't know if this is going to turn out well. And then lo and behold, somebody in the back line or yourself will come out and have it all make sense or have a funny take on what just happened. Right. So the trick, I think, with improv is like, just play it real. And it's, I sound like I'm in teaching mode, but it's really about listening. It's really about listening. It's about relinquishing your idea about what the scene's about or what the funny idea, I'm going to have a home run joke here. And you got to let that go and dial into what that guy's saying, what your scene partner's saying. If somebody's like, I wish that waiter would be here, jump on it, don't hesitate, come on stage, be a waiter, don't be in your head going, I know they want a waiter, but I don't have a good waiter character. He's like, no, fuck it, just get out there. Like, free yourself from like having it be perfect or super funny, just support, yes and, listen, trusting your partner, making them the most important thing of the scene, and then, uh, respecting the audience, like giving them the benefit of the doubt that they're, many of them are smarter than you. Uh, they're here to have a good night, so don't feel like, oh, I gotta craft something that they're gonna understand and they're gonna, it's like, no, they're here. They probably like us already, or they, they're intelligent people, so let's go for the funniest, smartest thing we can do and roll the dice that way. <laughs>